Welcome to Live from the Meadowlands. I'm your host, Kate Glennon. And today is a very special day in the games. A day that we take to honor and remember the generous donors and their families for their incredible gifts and acts of selflessness. Today is Donor Remembrance Day. At each games, we build a reflection space that features photos of our donor heroes. This year, we will feature our heroes digitally, both on the Event Hub and also at American Dream. Today's programming includes a look at our ballroom dancing participants, the 5K to the Meadowlands segment, sponsored by Betsy's Dash, and of course, tonight's donor tribute. Thank you to Bridge to Life for supporting the tribute. Here to tell us about tonight's donor tribute is Foundation Board Chair, Chris Batista. Hi, Chris. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hi, Kate. I'm proud and honored to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So I hear that you're a featured speaker at tonight's donor tribute. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your connection and story? Uh, sure. Yeah. I, as you introduced me, obviously I'm the chair of the Foundation Board, but I like to say even more important, I'm the donor dad to the legendary Luke Batista. It's my son. Uh, he had just turned 15 and uh, he passed away in 2016, just over five years ago. And, uh, you know, obviously the most tragic moment of my life, my family's life. And uh, we like to tell people that the moment we heard about the possibility of organ donation and that he could save lives and do something positive, uh, I like to say we took a sad song and made it a little bit better to steal from the Beatles. Um, and we, we really feel like we've accomplished that and more people know my son's name and know about his story and know about all the good that he's been able to do uh, by giving the gift of life uh, than ever before. And it's just been a truly amazing experience. It, it's obviously, it's a little bit of a give and take. It's like, well, you know, we're trying to cope and deal and, you know, figure our way through the most emotional time of our lives and to have something like organ donation to see the impact that it makes with all of these recipients is just the most beautiful thing that we could possibly have to come out of this event. Right. Well, thank you so much for your gift and thank you for Luke's gift. It's absolutely amazing and inspirational. Um, how do you keep Luke's story and name alive throughout all of this? So as soon as we found out that he could be, an organ donor, uh, we just dove right in. I started handing out the green bracelets immediately, even at his viewing, you know, we had thousands of people lined up around the block to come and see him. And we put billboards up already about, you know, what organ donation can do and what Luke was able to do specifically. So it was like, it was my way of, you know, really it was therapy. Uh, it was the one thing that I can control in an uncontrollable situation. And uh, so that's really, it was, it was maybe a selfish reason. It was my way of coping. But as soon as we saw the difference that it made on so many people, not just recipients, but to the people who lost someone that they loved, I mean, I'm sure I can speak to the other donor families out there, you know, for them by saying that, you know, we're so proud that our loved ones, whether it be a son or daughter or a parent or our, our, our love of our life, that having organ donation and tissue donation in our lives and knowing that we can talk about them in that way just adds this whole other level of, you know, wow, you know, what a great purpose that this person fulfilled. You know, my son, died, he just turned 15, like I mentioned, but he lived a full 15 years of his life and now he's living on in others. And that's just, I mean, it still blows my mind that, you know, I've met a couple of his recipients. It's amazing to see them and to, to know that part of my son is inside of them, keeping them alive. Um, really, it's just the most beautiful thing. Right. It really is. Um, can you tell us a little bit about those moments, you know, meeting those people and those experiences? Yeah. So we met um, Luke's pancreas recipient and uh, she's in her 30s from Pennsylvania. And um, once she had Luke's pancreas, uh, she was diabetes free for the first time in 30 years. That's she amazing. said, she tells the story to people. She's like, I, I used to wake up in the morning and I'd, I'd reach over and for my insulin pump. And I still do that when I wake up. And then I'm like, Oh, Luke. And so the first thing on her mind every morning is my son, because 
here she is, diabetes free for the first time in 30 years. I didn't even know that that could be cured, mm -hmm. okay, and that she can be this healthy. I didn't know. Uh, so that, that amazed me. And we met Andre. Andre is, I'm 6'4", he's 6'6", okay, 30s, uh, played basketball, the works. So he got Luke's left kidney. And four months later, him and his wife uh, went to the doctor. He got a clean bill of health. Everything's doing great. So uh, they went home and celebrated. And nine months later, had a baby girl, Amaya Rose. And we got to meet her as well. And I never thought that, okay, we know that Luke is saving lives with his organs. But it didn't even dawn on me that new life could be brought into the world by that person that he saved. And uh, that, again, was another mind-blowing experience to realize that that could happen, too. I mean, who knew? I don't think pe most people don't think that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And, my God, they're, they're, she's so beautiful. I love her name. Amaya Rose. It's beautiful. It is. And, uh, yeah, she's definitely going to be a basketball player like both of her parents, too, when she <laughs> grows up. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, as you said, he not only saved so many lives, but now is creating these families and allowing them to continue to grow and everything that's unheard of. I didn't know, I didn't know when we named him that Luke meant bringer of light. And uh, we, we found out shortly after he passed away, somebody told us that. And he literally lit up the room when he walked in. He was into video production. He made movies, uh, you know, in school or for contests and things like that. He was also a drummer and played music. And when he entered a room, he owned it. The last time I saw Luke alive was at a Pearl Jam concert, just to give you an idea of the kind of fun loving experiences that we've had with him. And now he still brings light and life to people, you know, at five years after he has passed away. So, you know, again, I, you know, I like to, you know, I like to share those things about Luke just because, you know, as a parent, we get involved with our children's lives. If they want to drum, you get them drums. They want to play basketball, maybe you coach them. They die and donate organs, you speak about them until you can't speak anymore. And that's really why we got involved and why we do what we do. And, uh, you know, it's really beneficial, especially at transplant games, to see the recipients and to see them living their lives with such humility and such grace and realize just, you know, how, how beautiful it is that they're able to live and go on and their families can see them alive and, you know, fortunately get to experience what we unfortunately can no longer experience with our son. Right. Well, you, you and Luke are such an inspiration and hearing all of that just proves that uh, fact. But um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, tonight's donor? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be handing out some stones. Um, there's a tradition where uh, folks will write to their loved one in honor of or to their donor and they'll write something on a little river stone and then uh, place it at the New Jersey Share Network. And tonight what we're going to do, there's a reflection garden at American Dream and everyone that's there at American Dream will get a stone. And I'll say a few words and then everybody will have an opportunity to go and place a stone there. And when it's all done, they'll be able to gather up those stones and we're going to bring them back to the sharing network. So anybody at any time can go to the garden there and, and see those stones. There are so many stones there over the years. Now it's been this really cool tradition and it means a lot to the people as you can see they're like, what should I write? I want to make it really good. Right. And then you got to write another tiny little stone, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. No, that garden is such a beautiful place, especially with all of those stones, just makes it even fuller and more inspirational, impactful than it would have been without them. Yep, absolutely. And I, I know it's kind of odd. I'm wearing this shirt. This is our, our team, Luke. Love it. We have the pig on there. He was a big fan of pigs. So just so you, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, why are you wearing pigs? It's like, well, he just, he had like over a hundred stuffed pigs, kitchen <laughs> utensils, That's the awesome. works. And he just he went to science camp and made a robotic pig. I mean, just, you know, it was one of those things where like, yeah, let's make a pig logo and roll with this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. And Team Luke is, you know, going real strong. We have 300 people, you know, every year signing up. And uh, it, it's been a great way for us to just come together and celebrate him and all the other donors, recipients and loved ones, um, you know, and doing it at the transplant games just takes it to a whole nother level.
Yeah, no, it totally does. And that's awesome that your team has become such a large community. Um, I see that the pig is very important, um, but I also know that there's something on the back of your shirt. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, I mentioned he was into music. He was a drummer. He also sang quite a bit too. We actually have a recording of him singing Foo Fighters, My Hero. And uh, when we wheeled Luke away to the operating room to, you know, begin the transplant surgery, uh, we wheeled it to Foo Fighters, there goes my hero, watch him as he goes. So on the back of our shirts, that's what it says. And uh, we like to have it on the back of the shirt so that we're ahead of people when we're running our 5Ks and they look behind us and, and, and see and they go, oh, there goes somebody, there's another hero. Because hey, if you sign up and you register to be a donor, you're a hero in my book too. So uh, that's just some way we try to make it all come together and celebrate life, celebrate music too. Why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's it's like a, 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 just a great way to honor people. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. No, that is awesome. Um, thank you so much for everything that you've done, everything that Luke has done and for being here with us today. Um, you really are an inspiration to everyone. Uh, you're very welcome. And thanks again for having me. Yeah, of course. For those of you with kids under 18 who are team members and registered for the games, you should have received a very cool gift from our great friend, Simon Keith. Each year, Simon's very generous acts of kindness benefit our youngest team members. This year, the Simon Keith Foundation sent out gift cards for new sneakers, which is a pretty great surprise. Let's hear from Simon now. I met a nine-year-old kid, his name was Chris, and Chris had had a heart transplant when he was 18 months, and um, he was part of a very active family, but his parents were um, nervous didn't really want to play in the dirt, didn't want to play competitive sports. Um, and you could see this kid wanted to play. So we sort of wrapped our arms around the family and it was my first experience really engaging with a, you know, another transplant family. Um, and we were able to get Chris from not being able to play at all to playing competitive soccer. And um, it, was, it was just a moment for me that solidified what I had to do sort of with the foundation. Um, Chris came off the field at nine years old, uh, very self-aware as a nine-year-old, and just looked at me and said, thank you, Mr. Keith, I'm not left out anymore. And it was, it was that moment for me that I decided there's got to be hundreds and thousands of these kids around. And so we went about raising money and having fun doing it and partnering with the Transplant Gains of America, and it's been great ever since. When Chris came off the field and, and just had pure joy in his face, uh, it, was, it was probably one of the proudest days of my life, knowing that um, we as a foundation, we just gave unselfishly. We weren't looking for anything, but we, you know, we made this kid happy and and you know he's still part of our foundation and part of our team, and he's grown and lives a healthy life and active lifestyle. And um, it's you know that's that's for me it's that's that's the the meaning of life is you know sort of your legacy is to to give unselfishly and to love unselfishly. And um, that moment for me was was it. All right, you've done something pretty cool for the games this year. Tell me. Well. <laughs> You know, our foundation, um, we're, we're, we're in the business of, of, of supporting these families and, and kids who have had, had organ transplants. And so it's a perfect fit between the Simon Keith Foundation and Transplant Gains of America. And so we want to buy every kid who participates a pair of shoes, a pair of running shoes. So we've partner, partnered with Nike and Under Armour, and we're going to deliver shoes to every participant uh, that's under 18. Thank you, Simon. We're so fortunate to have you in our community. With today's focus on donors, we want to bring special attention to the donor quilts that are displayed at each game's location. 
The quilts are beautiful and share so many special memories of loved ones. Joining us to tell us more about these quilts are donor parents, Paul and Jen Jova. Hi guys, thank Hi. you for being here. Thank, thank you for having us. us. Yeah, of course. Um, so we've been hearing about the quilts of love that are on display at American Dream. You're familiar with the quilts because you're donor parents. Could you share us a little bit about your story? Sure. So our son, Andrew, was 17 years old. He was a wonderful, fun-loving, uh, pain-in-the-neck teenager. Um, but Andrew, unfortunately, had a, a, um, an accident when he was 17 years old, and it left him with a, a brain injury. And the hospital approached us about organ donation. And never really thought about organ donation much before, but um, we thought that there was really no other answer than yes. And Andrew saved the lives of five others and helped enhance the lives of 48 other people. And um, if it was his decision to make, we know that he would have made the same decision. And he kind of liked to be the center of attention. So we try to do as much as we can in his honor and his name to keep his memory alive with Team Andrew and the Sharing Network. That was very brave of you both. And you know, that's the best gift that you could have possibly given. So thank you so much for that. Um, it, it was Andrew's gift. And uh, we, we've, uh, you know, lived our life in a way to give to others. And so did he. So it, right. was, it was a great opportunity. Yeah, That's amazing. So you made a quilt square for Andrew and we have a picture of it. Can you tell us about the square and how it represents Andrew? Well, we were approached to make a square when he first passed away, and um, we didn't really know much about the, the quilts at all at the time. So um, we were just told to make a, a square that would represent Andrew and the things that he liked to do. So um, he liked to golf, and he liked to play lacrosse, and he loved Nike sneakers and, you know, the Yankees, and he was involved in the youth group. So we tried to get a little bit of each of those activities on his quilt square. And... Um, you know, he, uh, he was a very fun person, so we wanted the quilt square to represent fun and uh, happiness. Right, and that's the best way to represent it with that quilt. Yes. No, that's great. Yes. yes. Um, so the quilt pinning ceremony that we usually hold in person is a very inspirational experience, and some have said that it helps their healing process. How did you feel about your experience? Well... The, the day of the event was very emotional for us. Uh, trying to pin a square on that represented our son uh, was difficult, and but also healing for us because we knew that his name would continue because it's on that square. It, it, it's something that we want to do as a, as a family is to continue Andrew's name and uh, keep it out there forever. And I knew with the sharing network that this would give us the opportunity to do that. And it was our very first uh, meeting or event with the Sharing Network. And that set us on the path that we're at now, um, that it, it's a great organization and they really cater to the healing process for the donors. Yeah. No, that's great. And Andrew will be remembered you know, through the Sharing Network and through your family because of that. Um, I know that you're super involved in the Sharing Network. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your experience with the Sharing Network itself? We try to volunteer as much as we possibly can. Paul's on the foundation board. And um, we have a team, Team Andrew, that we do every year for the 5K. And um, people rally together with us and, and really help us to remember Andrew and to support organ donation and a lot of friends of ours have become organ donors because of our experience with the Sharing Network. So it's been a pretty amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, Andrew not only saved however many lives, but also now is inspiring others to register mm -hmm. and become organ donors too, yes. which is, you know, the best thing you could ask for. Right. So, Paul, tell me about your experience in Salt Lake City. Well, while we were out at the games in Salt Lake City... Uh, we were in the in the room where we saw some quilts that were there for firefighters and uh, the military. And those quilts were very impactful for me because I seen how many lives are impacted by these people that were selfless, that, that were givers, that were that wanted to help their, their communities. And it really uh, brought attention to how 
giving everyone is in this organization. And, and, and it's, it's just amazing. It really is. Yeah, no, it is. It is really amazing. And I'm sure seeing those quilts in person was a whole other experience. Yes, yeah, for sure. And yeah, we saw like the quilts that we have at the Sharing Network are, you know, a lot of different ages, a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds. But this was one specific group, and it really draws attention to how much, how many people are Im impacted by it, and, and and how many organ donors, excuse me, donors there are, and it, it brings light to such a great, a great cause, and and it's amazing, it really is. No, it is, and it just shows how many lives are really affected by all of this. Yes. Um, Paul, Jen, thank you for sharing your story with us and thank you for your generous gift of life. And thank you for everything that you're doing. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in today and a very heartfelt thank you to our donor families who in their greatest moment of tragedy gave the greatest gift to another. We are forever grateful for your generosity.